Hey everybody, this is Rhett, welcome to Statistics, and this video we'll be discussing hypothesis testing, a trial of hypotheses. Here's the basic idea. We need to make a decision about the value of a parameter, such as mu or p. That's the population mean or the population proportion. Unfortunately, the true value of the parameter is unknown. Therefore, there may be different hypotheses about the true value of this parameter. In a hypothesis test, there are two competing hypotheses. The first is referred to as the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is denoted H naught. That's H with a subscript of zero. The null hypothesis is the status quo, or the assumed truth. This is the hypothesis that gets the benefit of the doubt. It could be previously published information, a generally accepted truth, or a generally applied value of the parameter. The opposition is the alternative hypothesis. This can be denoted H alpha, H A, or H1. This is the research hypothesis. It could be an update from previously published information, a challenge to a generally accepted truth, or a narrower application. When you see the phrase test whether, it's generally the alternative hypothesis that follows. So, how do we decide between the two competing hypotheses? A hypothesis test works like an American criminal trial. The charge is falsehood. The null hypothesis is the defendant. It is assumed that the defendant is not guilty, not guilty of being false. The alternative hypothesis is the prosecutor. The prosecution asserts that the defendant is guilty of being false. It is up to the prosecution to prove guilt. A jury will decide if the evidence of guilt is strong enough to convict. Otherwise, the verdict is not guilty. Not guilty does not mean innocent, only that there is insufficient evidence of guilt. So there are two possible decisions for the jury, guilty or not guilty. In terms of hypothesis test, guilty translates to there is sufficient evidence that the null hypothesis is false. If the null hypothesis is in fact false, then this is the correct decision. On the other hand, if the null hypothesis is in fact true, then this decision is an error. Not guilty would translate to there is insufficient evidence that the null hypothesis is false. If the null hypothesis is in fact true, then this is the correct decision. If the null hypothesis is in fact false, then this decision is an error. Here's a truth table that crosses the possible jury decisions with reality. Along the left-hand side, we see the two possible jury decisions. They can reject the null hypothesis, then the jury's decision is that the defendant is guilty. If the jury does not reject the null hypothesis, then it is the jury's opinion that the defendant is not guilty. Regardless of the jury's decision, the null hypothesis is true or false. If the null hypothesis is true, then the defendant did not commit the crime. If the null hypothesis is false, then the defendant did commit the crime. Look at the four possible intersections. In the center box, the null hypothesis is true, however, it is rejected by the jury. This is called a type 1 error when the null hypothesis is rejected when it is in fact true.
the bottom row of the center column, we see the intersection of do not reject H naught and H naught is true. In this case, the jury has made the correct decision. In the right hand column, middle row, we see the intersection of reject H naught when H naught is false. Again, this is a correct decision. The jury's opinion is that the defendant is guilty, and in fact, the defendant did commit the crime. In the bottom right hand box, we see the intersection of do not reject H naught and H naught is false. In this instance, we fail to reject the, the null hypothesis when in fact it is false. This type of error is referred to as a type 2 error. The probability of a type 1 error is called the level of significance of a test. This is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is in fact true. In terms of a trial, you might say convicting an innocent hypothesis. The level of significance is denoted as alpha. We set the value of alpha to be some small constant, such as 1%, 5%, or 10%. In terms of hypothesis testing, there are two possible conclusions. We either reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. It is important to understand that the decision to reject or fail to reject H naught does not prove anything. The decision represents whether or not there is sufficient evidence against a null hypothesis. So that's the basic idea of hypothesis testing. It works similar to an American criminal trial. There are two opposing hypotheses, a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. The possible decisions are reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. If we reject the null hypothesis when it is in fact true, that's a type 1 error. The risk of a type 1 error is alpha, the level of significance of the test. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Until next time, stay real and be rational.